Hey guys, it's Tommy CM. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another park spotlight. Today's park is called Canyon Valley Amusement Park. This was created by MBZust90 or otherwise known as MNJ Games on YouTube um, on the PS Workshop. The description for the park says, the park is finally complete. This is a realistic Cedar Fear style park with a lot of record breaking coasters. Blue Hawk has the tallest inversion ever at 212 feet. Scorpion is a 212 foot dive coaster. The park has seven roller coasters and four maintenance areas. There is also an RMC under construction. And thank you for thank you for everybody who has had an input into this park. Um, he then goes on to list a few people who have uh, added different bits, either naming coasters or some uh, some scenery pieces that he's used in the park. Um, and then also check out my wife and I's YouTube channel M and J Games for a tour of this park and more Planko content. Thank you so much. Make sure to check out at night. So uh, yeah, th this is uh, this is his second park that I've looked at. Um, I did one on his other park, Trinity Lake, um, a few weeks back. If you uh, want to check that out, I will put a little card in just here so you can look at that. Um, but yeah, other than that, we shall get going on the spotlight. Right, so normally I would start these um, spotlights by being in the spawn tunnel. However, because Monica has built such a huge car park for this uh, for this park, um, I will take a look at that first. I mean, he's absolutely packed out the car park as well. I've seen some car parks when people build them. Um, obviously, you don't want to take up the you know too many of the piece um, count and the uh, you know of the build counter on console. Um, but he's absolutely stacked it out here. Um, and it does look it does look really good. It's not something I've built yet. I, I would like to attempt it. So maybe in my next park I will put a car park in because um, I do like the layout of them um, of some of the parks I've seen, uh, especially you know especially like, like this. They uh, they do uh, you know they do look really genuine. It's just a shame that the guests all have to walk into the park down here um, because the uh, you know the, the effort down here with the planters as well, especially um, you know it all adds to adds to making a, a realistic looking theme park you know and and the views you can see there of the coasters from the car park you know if you pull up in the uh, if you pull up you know in your car and you look into the park and you see that you know it gets it gets you sort of really excited for the uh, for the day so uh, I, you know I know as a kid pulling up in uh, in the car park of different theme parks that it would uh, you know it, it would really be the first thing you spot you think oh look I can see that ride so uh, yeah really really nice addition and uh, again, really nice sight line, um, sight lines for these for these coasters. So that is the uh, so that is the road system and car park he's got in. Uh, and down here we have a staff entrance leading to a staff car park and a backstage area. Um, I mean, if you've seen any of um, Michael's other stuff on his on his channel, M and J Games. And um, you can see a series of, um, you know, of, of building elements of this park and his attention to detail and the realism is, is definitely, um, definitely something you, you associate with it, with his builds. Um, I love the detail of the backstage area here. You know, it's just one of these things where uh, there's no guests going down here. There's no staff that will go down here because um, obviously, you know, the buildings are empty. However, um, it, it just adds to making the park look more realistic because you know theme parks don't just run on the buildings that you place down theme parks run on all the behind the scenes you know elements as well so uh yeah really uh really nice backstage area there in staff car park um although there's, there's only there's only about 10 staff looking at the vehicles here so uh yeah there may need to be a few more in the uh, in the park but uh i think uh, i think we can let them off for that so here we have the crossing over to the main entrance here we have Canyon Valley written on the floor. It's a nice, uh, nice touch to decorate the floor with that. We have some tickets. Adults thirty-five. I'm assuming this is dollars because Michael's American. Uh, adults thirty-five dollars. Kids fifteen dollars. That's very reasonable. That's a very reasonable price. Um, definitely compared to some of the prices that we have to pay over in the UK. Um, if we were paying for full price. Uh, over here we have some toilets for men and women and some on the other side uh, and then we've got the wheel call over the other side and we'll go through here he's even built um he's even built his own turnstiles just so uh, just so you can see what we've built them out of 
Um, it's built them out of candy canes a lot. So he's, he's just changed the colour of, of the candy canes and put them in at different angles um, to create the turnstiles. Really, uh, really nice effect. Um, and really nice, you know, to see the guests walking through them, uh, or even the handymen walking through them. So, uh, yeah, really, uh, you know, again, it's just that small, realistic touch that, um, that you know, that adds to uh, adds to the entrance of the park. Now, the entrance itself here is is a really, really nice, wide open space um, for the guests to walk around in. It, you're not you're not kind of jumped upon with rides and coasters straight away. It's you know it's really nice open space. Let the guests spread out a little bit before getting into the park, which I like. Um, now over here we've got fast passes at these desks here, where we have well we, we've either got four brothers who are identical to each other, either quadruplets um, or just a lot of very similar people on the desk. Some uh, some lockers. An ATM. What's this in here? They're strollers. So uh, if you want to rent a stroller or push chair, or push chair if you're in the UK, um, and he's, he's even built them as well, which is which is cool. I do uh, I do like that. That's uh, 22 objects going to making a stroller. There you go. Um, so uh, yeah, and so yeah, a really really nice little touch. Um, massive. Uh, we, we don't not, we don't actually get massive sections of that in the UK. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't have any kids, so I suppose I don't even look out. You know, I don't really look out for those areas. But I know it, I know in the US it, it is a big. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of attention paid to stroller parking and stuff. So um, yeah, really uh, really nice detail that. And and the little sign on the front I think looks really neat as well. And then over this side. We have a staff room, some toilets, guest services. Nice use of the uh, barrier fencing here to make the queue line. And then we have some gift shops, some food areas. It's a massive sort of shop area, um, catering for everyone's uh, everyone's needs. And then down the back, we've got some staff rooms here. So uh, plenty of places for the staff to go and rest. It's also really handy. Um, like if you, you know, if you're making the, if you're playing on the game and making your own part, having the staff rooms near the um, near the shops because obviously the staff will jump out of the shops and the shops will close and if they're only going there, they won't close for very long. They don't have to walk for ages. So uh, yeah, really, uh, really good design that. So uh, yeah, just going along down here. I tell you what, what. what I think would have maybe looked nice, but I suppose you've got to design it. You've got to design it correctly for it to look nice. Is having a few water effects or fountains down down in this part that you know this water section here. I'm just having a few sort of sprinklers or um, and may, maybe some speakers with some you know some like nice entrance music going off. Um, I can I can hear vague bits of entrance music, but sort sort of along these lampposts here and uh, you know having like sort of like a nice welcome uh, welcome sound. Um, but uh, no, I, I do I do like the idea of the pool of water here. To, to square off the water as well is um, is easier said than done in this game. So uh, really really nice and neat looking um, looking section there. There we've got the uh, wooden fence to the staff area with the gate slightly open. I love that just to uh, you know it's those little details there just to think. Oh, I'll open it slightly so you know in case the in case the staff were going out. Uh, we've got some more food places over here, some places to sit down if the guests choose to do so. I, d I do like the buildings, the buildings are really nice and the, the glass roof as well. The windows in the glass roof really uh, really are a nice little style. And then <laughs> I like the gulpy, the gulpy signs there, look good. So, nope, this uh, staff member is very happy. And that... I mean, as you step out from the main entrance there, what a view that is. You know, I, I, I imagine he has worked around this, uh, this viewpoint, but, um, you know, to look around at all those coasters in the background and the height on some of them, some of them interacting there, look with the water, some of the drops on them lot, and they're all coming around at different times. It, it just looks fantastic, that does. That's such a, such a good view, you know, viewpoint and uh, sight line, so... Yeah, really, really good job on that. Uh, what I'm going to go here, I'm going to go left. I'm going to, uh, should we chase this guy? He's stuck with it now. Um, 
go down here along the side of this hedge. Really nice as well to put metal fencing around the coaster here. So not a lot of people necessarily fence their coasters in, which sounds, you know, it sounds it sounds a bit daft, but you know, it doesn't actually look abnormal to not have the fence there, but having the fence actually there does make it look realistic, if you get what I'm saying. So uh, yeah, really, uh, really nice to just kind of cage that in where sort of people could maybe, I don't know, run and jump and get in, you know, and kind of, if they wanted to be a maniac, go and, uh, go and touch the uh, coaster's track. So yeah, really nice sort of idea to, to cage that off, as is this little cage over the pathway here. Um, just another another nice use of the fence just to kind of block things off and have a bit of realism there They are it's really nice interaction there as that comes over from the inversion So this is blue hawk now He's got he's got a height marker on there So I'm gonna have a look at this at night time I think I'll Have a look at that at night Let's just have a look at the uh, the whole area at night. So you can see it's really nicely lit up. The car park's really nicely lit, lit up as well. Um, I do like that. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll go and queue up for this. Bit of a cattle pen queue line. Going up here. Now, one thing, uh, one thing I know Michael always puts in his parks is transfer tracks and sort of backstage areas to coasters. So, as you can see here, we've got a spare track there. Um, some sort of computers and storage down here um just for oh, he's even got look he's even got like pallets for have you built them pallets yourself it's not something i've missed is it animated scenery hey eh? okay well i'm st oh, it's, oh it's a stunt fall pallet oh that's why there we go <laughs> So yeah, so so the, it's a it's one of the uh, animatronic palettes, but so uh, yeah, just really uh, really nice sort of realism touch to the uh, to the coasters. So you can see here the coaster comes back in here to the brake section, and then he's got two beams going across where on a real coaster they would you know they would park the train there and switch the track and send the coaster train back in. So uh, yeah, really nice little touch there. I do like I do like the queue line coming over the exit of the ride as well. I think that, that looks nice. Nice use of the uh, curved roof on the station. So yeah, so this is Blue Hawk. This is a flawless coaster. Green stats across the board. If you are interested in the stats, um, I'm more interested in just enjoying the coaster myself. But I know some people do like to see what the stats are on the coaster. So uh, yeah, feel free to pause if you do want to look at them. Um, but yeah, this is. Blue Hawk, uh, and we've just got to wait for the guests to hop in. Here we go. This guy's excited. So am I. Let's go. Blue Hawk.
Really, a really good coaster. That I mean, one thing you can expect in uh, in Michael's parks are fantastic coasters. Um, that you know, he has said that is one of his uh, one of his strong points. And I mean, the, the size of the coasters in this park, as you can see from the sight lines, you know, there's some huge drops out there. Um, really like these little pits as well for you know for the kind of track to go down and come back up. Really like how you know how you kind of dug those out. That looks, you know, I think I think that looks spot on. As I say, the the realism here on on this little brake run um, to build the staircases and the floor um, to kind of you know just accompany that area, and then you've got the trucks etc. Backstage here, it's just you know it's all that little detail just to make the coaster that bit more realistic. So uh, yeah, absolutely top marks for that. And as I say, the uh, the inversions as well, really uh, really well sort of um, timed with the speed. Uh, I do, I do like this last inversion here. Just as, uh, just as you're going over the path, I think that looks, that looked really good. You know, on the path and on the ride as well. Um, the only thing about that, and as you'll see, I, I did, uh, I did kind of skip it in the, uh, in, in the video, um, was the lift hill. See, it does, does seem to drag to get up that, that you know, much of, uh, that much of a climb. Um, I don't know, if, I don't know if it, what it would do if speeding it up. Uh, I don't know if that would alter the stats or, or anything on the coaster or the speed, um, but I'm not going to mess with it. it. Like I say, it is a really good coaster, um, and obviously if you are just going on this, you can always fast forward it if you don't want to sit and wait. So uh, yeah, really, uh, really good start to that. So we shall go, uh, where's the exit down here? Where's the exit? And we shall go, we'll go along this way. Got some vending machines in there. And we get to, oh, let's have a look at this flat ride first over here. I mean, they, I hate these things. I, I, well, I say I hate them, I've never been on them, but I, I would hate them in real life. I, I would never dream of going on that. That would, I, I can do most rides, but anything that spins me around all over the shop, I can't do. Um, but, uh, and then we've got another entrance here for another flat ride. There we go. This uh, this guy needs the toilet by the looks of it, the way he was running. But um, yeah, I tell you what is interesting to see, because it's, it's really nice having two entrances side by side there and being a bit symmetrical. I do like that design. Um, it's interesting to see how many guests go to that flat ride over that one. You know, because there's, no there's no way you can really theme them. You, you know, well, the, the theming here isn't any different, is it, between the two rides? So it's really interesting to see how popular that is compared to this one. But um, yeah, if you've not seen this one in action yet, I uh, <laughs> I certainly would not be going on this at any stage. So uh, I, I mean, it, it looks fantastic. It really does. I, I do uh, I do like the style of it. But um, I think that I think there is one, maybe two in the world. But uh, yeah, certainly not one for me. That's for sure. Um, and then over here we have we have a bit of a food court. I love the metal roof. That metal roof looks good with the. Uh, with the metal supports there for the shopping area. So now we get to Scorpion, which appears to be a dive coaster. Oh, um, Michael, you've got you've got a couple of people trapped over here. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. Let's get the security to get them out. I don't. I don't know what's going off here, but uh, let's try and do that and get them gone. Nope, they're just gonna stay there. Never mind, they can they can get stuck. Uh, right, Scorpion. Again with the height markers, really nice touch. Go along here. So instead of a cattle pen queue line this time, we've got one going around the track and going through bushes, which is nice. And then we get up to the station, which is a really um Really, sort of unique design that is. It's um, having the beams going across with the, with a sort of, kind of flat roof with it pointed off at an angle. Really, uh, really unique design. And it, it, I think it looks quite good. I think it's a, a really nice little structure. It kind of blends in with the uh, with the colours as well. So uh, yeah, really nice. So yeah, this is Scorpion, which is a dive coaster. There's the stats for it. There's the rest of the results. And we shall hop on, uh, and take a ride.
There we go. Really, uh, really nice dive coaster that. It, dive coasters are very hard. Once you do that initial drop, it's hard to know what to do with them without making them too, too sort of crazy. Um, but that is just the right amount of uh, right amount of track, right amount of inversions. So uh, yeah, really, uh, really like that. The, the tunnel design is brilliant. I do like. I do love this tunnel. What what, what piece of music? Castle. Wow. That that honestly does look fantastic in there. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I was, I was just expecting to go into the ground, to be honest. <laughs> um, bit like this section here. I was expecting this on the first one, but uh, I really do, really do like that sort of style you've got, you've gone for there. Um, again, with the backstage areas, you know, with, with the air vents here, the, the trucks. Um, we've got the transfer, transfer tracks here. Even got the wheels spinning lot. And he's even got a, he's even got a train in here. So is this a station? It is, isn't it? Where's the? <laughs> Shit in the operator. That that's really good because the, the only way you can get a train to sit there if it's not if it's not in use on the ride is it is for it to be part of the station. So so to do that and hide the uh, hide the member of staff there at the side is is a really nice uh, really nice idea. I do like that. So uh, yeah, really uh, really good. There. I mean, you can tell from this part that it's. It's sort of like done on a on a, on a Cedar Fair style park. There's not, you know, the the rides aren't overly themed. They're not, you know, they're, they're not kind of, you know, he's not called it Scorpion and then placed a load of Scorpion animatronics everywhere, etc. It's it's more about the actual coaster. Um, so that's the sort of style of park he's um, he's based it off. So uh, I don't think I've missed anything else down here. So we'll go along this section. There's the gate to the uh, backstage area just there. I'm going back up the exit there, my bad. Let's go around this way. Always nice as well on, on uh, dive coasters, going, on, going underground where people can see them. Um, so you know, you can stand there and watch people go underground. Um, obviously, the one closest to me is Oblivion at Alton Towers, which was the uh, the the world's first dive coaster, I believe, um, and uh, yeah, you can stand all the way around that that drop there, and it always uh, always does look good. So we shall move on from Scorpion and carry on around. I don't think I've missed anything on that path in the middle. That's just a bit of a shortcut, isn't it? Um, we'll carry on around this way to oh, Iron Horse. Expected? <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> so he's. <laughs> This is really clever. I mean, this must have taken some uh, some design, uh, you know, say so kind of like some thought and design into this. So he's built, um, he's built like a construction area with parts of the track completed, parts of it still to be done, pieces being lifted in, as you can see here. Uh, trucks, you got a bit of a shelter here. That that's a really nice touch to have like a construction area. In the um, in the back of the park, what what I am gonna what I'm gonna say is as soon as he gets as soon as Michael gets a PS5, I want to see him come back to this park and complete that so that you can take this sign down. That's uh, that that's one thing I want to hold him to. So, uh, but no, yeah, I really like that. I really, it's a really nice idea to put a construction area in with um, with the fencing around because you know again that's it's just. I keep using the word, the you know, the realism of the park. It's it, you know, it does. It's something you can relate to in real life parks for sure. Some more food and drink down here. Got a sundial flat ride. These are always, these are always quite popular. Yeah, these always get a decent size queue. And he's used he's used the fencing as roof as roofing, which is a which is a nice uh, nice sort of effect there. It's uh, nice and different for sure. Some more vending machines here. Everything's like neatly squared off, which I quite like. Everywhere is, you know, designed really, really neatly, um, which is one thing I do, uh, I do rate in this uh, in this part for sure. Right, so into the woods. No idea what this coaster is, but we'll find out shortly. There's the uh, there's the backstage area for this one. More trucks, more boxes, and we shall go into the station, which is really uh, it's a really nice sort of mesh 
theme here in here with the with the fencing used as the roof again in here. It's a really colourful coaster and it's in bright pink. Uh, right, I can't even select the coaster because it's uh, it's hidden there. Uh, Into the woods, which is a always oh, a flying coaster. Right, right. So let's uh, let's have a look. There's the stats and there is the other results for the coaster. Here you can see the flying coaster coming in. And let's set back up right, so we will jump on and see what Into the Woods has to offer. There we go. That was uh, that was into the woods. Uh, really, uh, really nice flying coaster. That is, I love the um, which section was it? This uh, where you go inside the half loop, and go upside down, and then you come back over as well. I thought that that sort of piece was uh, was very uh, very imaginative to to do that. I imagine that the force on that would be uh, would it would be pretty strong as well going around on the coaster. But yeah, it's a not nice sort of smooth transitions on there. It's definitely not a coaster you want to feel jolty on. You don't want to be thrown about on a flying coaster. Um, but yeah, just uh, overall really, uh, really nice sort of layout on, on here. It's even built, even built a ladder all the way up there to the uh, to the brake run. You know, you know, again, didn't have to. Um, but unfortunately, there's no there's no flights of stairs um, in the you know in Planet Coaster without using the sort of apartment style stairs uh, and some of the other steel stairs that is used in other sections so it's just a nice way to uh, to get up you know get up to that area without building loads and loads of steps um, and then in here we've got sort of a we've got the backstage area again a bit of a transfer track here that just comes in and joins onto the main one so uh, yeah it's always if you ever you know if you ever download this park or or any of Michael's others it's always one one element to look out for Here's the stairs I was talking about earlier, um, but you don't necessarily want to build them all the way up that high. But uh, yeah, really, uh, really nice coaster that. Flying coasters are a lot of fun, in my in my opinion. Um, another flat ride just there, just kind of just to add another attraction to the park. And we shall go away from uh, away from the pink area of into the woods. What have we got up here? Mexilente. Burrito Bonanza. Really nice little uh, little terrace out here. Just kind of looking onto the uh, onto the coasters where you could sit down and you know and, and have a nice uh, have a nice bite to eat. Well, one thing that is annoying about these about this section 
is um, is that the guests won't come out here annoyingly because there's nothing to there's no attractions out here. So what you can do is put like a viewpoint in, um, so that the guests will come and have a look at the uh, you know at, at that specific area. So yeah, that that may be one one way to just kind of fill out that area. It, you won't get masses of people out here, but it just kind of makes a few more people wander out there. Um, so uh, yeah, that's one thing to definitely uh, potentially consider. That's. I love all the benching around here. There's lots of places for to sit down, lots of bins, etc. Again, again with the with the gaps in the path here for the for the different coaster inversions, it just looks really nice. And all the interaction with the path as well just looks spot on. Uh, we'll just go down here. Right, let's go. Oh, so that is the exit. Okay, so we'll go around to the right. And hopefully, we get to White Cap. Q line is going all the way around these trees. And we'll go up. I think we'll ride this one at night time. Look at that moon. Look at that. Great view. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is White Cap. We'll have a look at the rest of it at the end. There's the stats. There's the results. If you are interested. And let's go. Mon car, mon car. I will start again when that hill climb, when it comes back to the station. There we go. Really, uh, really nice, really nice little coaster. That is, I love the, uh, I love those, those hill, hill climbs and drops there. That's always a, that's always a nice element to have on these coasters. But um, I, I like, I like how the whole track is sort of interacting with the path there. There's nothing that kind of goes away anywhere, um, and it's nicely lit up as well because of that, because of the, because of the lighting on the path. The, uh, the coaster itself is nicely, um, nicely lit. So you know, as you can see, as you can see there, the the hill climb there, and it's just it, it's quite a uh, it's quite a photogenic coaster, I would say that is, because you you know you can see it from all different angles around the path. So uh, yeah, really uh, really like what what you've done there, and I like how low it is as well. It doesn't obviously you've got a lot of big coasters in this part. You know you've got a lot of big climbs, and I like how this one is more kept down to the ground, uh, and a lot sort of more um I don't, I don't know how to say it. it's more it's more like compact isn't it so but it's kind of it keeps the speed going even though it is quite low so uh, yeah really uh, really do like that nice bit of water here again i you know I, I keep saying it but to square off the water or to you know have the water kind of meet in the the uh, meet in the path like that it's very difficult to do uh, i mean if, if you delete that that's what you normally get so you have to spend time um, you have to spend time building around and uh, it just makes makes for such a nice effect when it's done right so uh, yeah I love that uh, we'll go back to daytime I think so there is white cap and we have some toilets some food and drink areas all the buildings are kind of matching the colors of the coaster the next two which I think you know really adds to the sort of theming Titan, there's the height markers for this one. She's only that woman is only just tall enough to as a kid to go on. Blimey, almost almost too small. <laughs> um, going this way, that's a nice little custom support. I rate that. That's uh, is that a custom support? It is. 
got to be, isn't it? Well, is that not custom support? Okay, I'm completely wrong. I thought that was a custom support. Um, clearly not, ignore me. I, I just like that support. I think that looks really nice. And it's nice having the queue line go around it as well. So, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm giving you praise, Michael, for something you've not, you've not done by the looks of it. Um, but, yeah. Again, all the, all the stations are designed so differently in, in their own way. I mean, you know, look at that. It's to build, I'll tell you what, to build on a slant, on a bit of an angle in this game is so tricky um, because things just want to auto stack all the time. So to build with the auto stacking turning off and, uh, and getting things level up, you know, to level up like that is very difficult. So uh, yeah, top marks for that. I do, uh, that's probably one of my fa favorite stations in the park, um, mainly for the color as well. I like the, uh, I like the orange and blue color. So this is a hyper coaster called Titan. There's the stats, all green, and we shall go on to Titan, which is a huge hill climb by the looks of it, so let's go. There we go. That was Titan. What a uh, what a really what I mean. First of all, what a huge coaster. Um, I mean, you, you can tell the sort of uh, the sort of parks uh, in America that Michael's uses sort of inspiration here. You know, th these are the sort of huge like hyper coasters that American theme parks like Cedar Point um, tend to go for over say you know a, a nicely themed area. So. You know, as opposed to your sort of Disney and, and Universal Studios style parks, these are the sort of coasters that they will uh, that they'll go for in, in you know in, in the other parks. Um, but, you know, and they're fantastic rides, and it's it's very hard, I think, in this game to actually build a huge a huge coaster like that and get it to fit in well, because they can often stand out, especially because you've got to sort of not necessarily theme because as i say it's not it's not really a themed area but you've got to sort of make the track look like it's not just going in the middle of nowhere so it's nicely it's nicely sort of accompanied by trees by water by you know other elements of the track here the and all the way along it there is something sort of interacting with the ride which i which i you know really do like and it comes all the way over here which, bearing in mind, this is on the opposite side of the park. The, the station is like literally the, the other side over there, um, and it interacts as well with the uh, with the flying coaster down here, the uh, the Into the Woods one. So, yeah, really, uh, really good job to uh, to build such a huge coaster and get it to and get it to blend in. And I mean, don't get me wrong. When I say blend in, I don't mean that it's hidden because uh, it's quite clearly not. But it, it doesn't stand out even though it is such a huge coaster it doesn't you know it's, it, it fits into the style of the park really well so uh, yeah really good job there um, and then the backstage area down here for this one we have another transfer track there where we have the bars going across here we've 
you know, it's even gone to the detail of these like electric cables and and all sorts. It's you know, and the the realism just looks fantastic. And I mean, it, it's it's it'd be impossible to work out, but I'd love to know how much of the build counter is taken up by realism. Um, I know I know that um, Michael uses the uh, the sort of method to boost your um, build counter for the PS4. Um, just out of interest, look as you can see. This is on a PS5 and it's on 88%. This park is a PS4 park. Um, <laughs> so that PS4 must be absolutely busting a gut to uh, to play the, <laughs> to play this game on the, on there. Um, but ba basically what he does is um, kind of covers uh, like four or five coasters and makes them one blueprint and it reduces the uh, re reduces the size on or the impact on the build counter. So if I highlight that lot you can see there's uh it, that picks up the whole ride as a blueprint um and then with the car park as well picks up all of that as a blueprint so uh placing those back down reduces the build counter so uh but no yeah you know if you look at the realism down here the, there's even coaster pieces look it's even got is that actually part of a ride it is isn't it wow right and, and there's a chain the, the chain is constantly running so uh I think the electric bill might be going up for that. You want to get someone to turn that one off, but um, yeah. And then what, what's this? Is this just like an empty warehouse? Yeah. I, again, completely. I, when I say completely unnecessary, I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, you know, it's amazing that he's gone to this level of detail to make it look like a real park. You know, with these containers, with the trucks, with the with these sheds like this, with the spare track parts and. Oh, the, Honestly, there is so much, so much realism down here. It's uh, it's unbelievable. It really is. So um, yes, we shall continue on. This road just goes, the road just goes all the way down here. Look, with different vehicles coming in and out of the park. I sh yeah, it's just mad. And then we're back near the car park over there. You see, so we will get back over to Titan, which is over here. I like how the uh, the switch track um, is a sort of similar similar style building. It's not just a shed. I like the fact that it's a similar style building to the uh, to the station. I think that that looks nice. Uh, so we'll go back around here. They're excited. Go on, run. Oh, okay. Let's stop now. Um, keep going down here, and we get to the yellow curse. Some uh, more height markers. This looks like an interesting tunnel. This reminds me of the Hawk coaster at uh, Islands of Adventure. One, one of the best coasters I've ever been on. That is um, the launch coming out of the tunnel. There is uh, is phenomenal. Got some more backstage areas here. Another ladder all the way up there to the um, to the break room. Love the station. Love these yellow beams and uh, I mean, look at look at that for a view going up the tunnel there. That looks awesome. And I like the use of the yellow glass as well. The yellow glass looks really nice. And then you, what's this? Is this the? Uh, have you got? Yep. Yeah, there's a transfer track there. Look. Again, wouldn't be a coaster in this park without a transfer track in it. it doing it on every coaster as well makes it even better. It just does because you know you come to sort of look for it and and expect it. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, hop on the yellow curse. So let's go here. If we can actually click on the ride, no. Nope. There we go. The yellow curse. There's the stats. There's the results. And we shall hop on, and uh, we'll sit in seat two this time in the middle. So yeah, let's go. The yellow curse. Man with the mustache. Fire us away. Any minute now. Any minute now. Let's go.
really good. I love the launch there. As, as I say, it's a lot like the Hulk coaster at um, Islands of Adventure. Really, uh, really good start. And what I did like, what my favourite part there was the this inversion on the way down. So you kind of come out and it's almost like, is it like a, a barrel roll or an inline twist on the on the drop? I mean, that, that's a really, uh, really unique inversion that is to have on i've not i've not seen a coaster like that before but I, yeah really uh, really enjoyed that that was uh that was a really good uh, really good coaster i love the way it loops back round over the track there as well that looks really good um and then obviously you've got the uh, the backstage area down here and we shall that's the queue line so we shall go out of the exit over here Leapfrog. What is Leapfrog? Let's have a look. This is another coaster, and this is a this is a junior coaster. It's a Wendigo. So there you are. There's the stats. Obviously, it's not green across the board because to do that on a Wendigo coaster takes some ability, definitely. Um, but we will uh, we'll wait for that to come back in. Here we go. There's the Wendigo. Obviously got his lockers in uh, from, I remember these lockers from a previous park. Uh, you, just a nice way of using that sort of barrier fencing. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have a go on Leapfrog. We'll speed up to get these people in. And we will go, I'm going to go front bumper this time just so I haven't got the uh, Caterpillar or whatever the creature is, if, if it's a frog in this one, um, I've not got that head in the way. So yeah, here we go. Really, uh, really fun junior coaster. That you, you're never going to make the biggest coasters in the world as a Wendigo coaster. Um, but uh, yeah, really, really nice sort of layout. Does the uh, does the job. Themed with a few trees. That's all you need on there. You don't need to go OTT with a junior coaster. And nice bit of interaction there with the uh, with the path. I, I don't think there's much more you can say about that. As I say, junior coasters um, don't tend to involve much other than the track. Um, but uh, yeah, really, uh, really nice ride, and I, I'm glad, I'm glad that you've uh, you've shortened the uh, the train to uh, how many how many cars are we on? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that seven or eight? I think it's seven. Um, I'm glad you've shortened it from like the the 16 or something ridiculous that the game just gives you as standard. No train in the world needs to be that long at all. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we shall come off of a leapfrog. Back down here, and go back round the path. The the path going around the lake is is really nice because it it's not it's not one whole path going round. Um, there is you know there is a bridge going over and there's little side paths going off, so it's not a huge crowd going on, but it's busy enough to make it feel like the main walkway. So I do uh, I do like the sort of pathing layout on here. Um, you got one of these claws of doom or whatever they're called. Forge, this one's called. One of these uh, flat rides that just kind of throws people about on the claw. I like the colours on that, the red and black looks good. Um, and then I believe we are back at the park entrance. Right, and then just before uh, just before we wrap up, uh, I just want to take a look at the park uh, at night time and just see what the lighting looks like. So he's got some re really nice lighting around all the queue lines, all the paths are very nicely lit. 
there's no um, there's no paths that end up in darkness. There's all you know there's lighting around all of them. Um, the only the only elements of darkness you see is where sort of coasters go off of the uh, off of the paths. But uh, the actual paths themselves, I mean, you can see all the you know all the areas lit up very nicely. Um, it does you know it does make a huge difference to to you know to see the lighting like that. The car park lighting and the road lighting looks really good. Um, everything's very symmetrical, which is doing uh, doing great things for my OCD. Really like to see a good piece of symmetry. Um, so uh, yeah, really uh, really do like the lighting on here. Um, this area is really nice for lighting over by uh, over by Scorpion, especially with the lighting on the hole here as um, as the train goes down. Oh well. Right, well I'm not I'm not spending any more time chasing these guys a lot. Look at this lot, they're stuck and they're on a path. I can't, they, they can't be helped. They cannot be helped. But uh, yeah, we shall leave that there. Um, if you did enjoy that, I will uh, I will leave Michael's uh, YouTube channel in the description below, and along with uh, along with the description for the park, so that you can uh, go and check this out on the Frontier Workshop yourself. As I say, it is a PS4 park, um, but it is very much. Uh, very much utilizing the most you can possibly put on a ps4 for this game um but yeah if you, if you enjoyed that please leave a like and subscribe if you are new and i shall see you in the next episode thank you for watching goodbye